From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, Bob Hall at Plymouth. We've got a bad thing down here. Oh, what's that? One of our company investigators has been killed. I think you knew him, Gene Reimer. Gene Reimer is dead. Yeah, shot to death. We learned of it this morning. Sent him down to Charleston to look into a murder. Does his wife know yet? She was with him. I mean, she went to Charleston with him. We want to put somebody right on it, Johnny. That's why I called. Uh, oh, sure, Bob. I'll, I'll come right over and get the rest of the story from you. Edmund O'Brien and another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Plymouth Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Leland Blackburn matter. Expense account item 1250, cab fare from my apartment to the Plymouth building. Hey, Johnny. Yeah? Oh, hi, Merle. What are you doing down here? From the Gene Reimer shooting. I wondered if it heard. He talked a lot about you. You were good friends. We learned the business together in the Pinkerton Agency. Almost opened our own office. It didn't pan out. I wish it had. We're going to miss him around here. He was a great guy. Yeah. Well, Bob Hall's waiting for me, Merle. I'd better get in there. Sure. Good luck, Johnny. He's waiting for you. You can go right in. Thanks. How are you, Bob? Thanks for coming right over, Johnny. Wouldn't have blamed you if you'd turned it down. Forget it. I feel pretty awful about it. I gave the case to Gene myself. He wasn't up for one, but there would have been some extra money for him. I knew he needed it. He didn't have to take the case. He didn't have to earn a living this way. It's a funny thing for you to say. Well, there's no other way to look at it. You can't hunt trouble forever without finally running into some. I got the idea that you were his friend. I was. But you aren't hiring a friend, Bob. You're hiring an investigator. If you want me to go to work on this, I'd better get some facts. I don't understand you. What about the case he was on? You said it was murder? A policyholder named Leland Blackburn was bludgeoned to death in his home. How long had Gene been on it? Less than a week. Five days. Had he sent in any report on what he'd learned? No, he hadn't. Is that all? That's all I know. He was staying at the Hotel Lee. His wife is still there. As I said, she'd been with him. I suggest you talk to her first. I will. I'll leave as soon as I can get plane space. All right, Johnny. Good luck. Expense account item two, eighty-five dollars transportation between Hartford and the Hotel Lee in Charleston. It was eight thirty p.m. by the time I checked in, and my first move was to the phone. Yes. This is Johnny, Barbara. Johnny, where are you? The floor above you. The Plymouth Company sent me down to look into Jean's death. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Johnny. When will I see you? As soon as possible. Well, give me just 15 minutes to put a face on it. Come on down. a long time. I, I can't tell you what a shock it was to hear your voice on the phone. I, I've been thinking about you. Oh? Well, it, was, it was natural, too. You've been the only one I turned to when there was trouble. How did the company happen to send you? Because I knew Jean, I guess. Was anything said about us? There was no reason for that. Everything between you and me stopped when you got married. We'd better keep it that way now. Sure. It was a beautiful marriage all the way around. I told you it would be. You remember that? Yes. But there was a side of Gene Reimer that hardly anybody knew. You didn't believe me. I learned to. And you made some pretty serious statements to me after you did. I want to get that off my chest before we go any farther. I don't know how many times you told me that you were afraid you were going to kill him for what he'd done to you. And you meant it, didn't you? Johnny. The last time was less than a month ago. You don't think I killed him? I remember what you said. Johnny, don't. Why did you come to Charleston with him? Because he made me come. Why? Because it... I don't want to tell you. Why not? It doesn't have anything to do with what happened. Then you shouldn't mind telling me. He found out about somebody I'd been seeing in Hartford. I know it sounds cheap, but you must realize... Never mind that. 
Jean brought you down here to keep you away from this guy. Yes. Johnny, you can't think I killed him. I hope you didn't. For old times' sake, I'd hate to learn that you did. They were good times, Johnny. What do you know about the case Jean was working on? Nothing. He never talked about any of them. Well, I'll start on it tomorrow. Good night, Barbara. Expense count item three, two dollars, cab fare the next morning to police headquarters where I met Lieutenant Sims, the officer in charge of both killings. Well, looks to me like they piled a load of work on your shoulders, Dollar. You signed to both murders? Chances are that they go together, don't you think? Hard to figure that far yet. Well, what have you got on this Leland Blackburn? The file isn't complete on him. The widow and son refused to authorize an autopsy. Took a few days to force it through, so we got no report. Who was he? An old codger, a pillar of the old south, so to speak. He was a broker, him and his son Rollin, pretty wealthy folks. What do you think was the motive? Well, we're thinking it was robbery. Nobody knows how much, but old Leland's wallet was empty when they found it. He just told the phone operator he wanted the police when he was hit. The phone was still in his hand. Well, I'll have to go and talk to the family. Help yourself. Now, this other Hartford man, a likable kind of fellow, you know him? Yeah, I... I know Gene for quite a few years. Makes it bad when it's a friend, don't it? Well, it doesn't help. Do you have anything on his death? No, absolutely nothing. He was shot three times at close range with a thirty-two caliber gun. All three slugs went through him and smashed up on a brick wall behind him. Spoiled him for ballistics. Why did it happen? In an alley off Magazine Street. And that's why we can't figure any connection between that shooting and the Blackburn killing. You know this town? No. Why, no Blackburn had set foot in that magazine street section. They'd live at the other end of the town, south of Broad Street. That's a whole lot closer to heaven, I can tell you that. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Lieutenant. Looks like I've got a lot of cold trail to follow, so I'd better get moving. Later that day, after checking by phone to learn when the sun would be home, I went to the Blackburn residence. It was a warm, friendly estate glowing with southern tradition. The same thing could have been said about the widow, Mrs. Blackburn. But son Rollin must have taken after his father. What I resent most of all is that you are here simply because you suspect either mother or me or both of us of nefarious plot. Now, Rollin. Isn't that right? Murder is a hard thing to ignore, Mr. Blackburn. I am not ignoring it, but I believe our local police are quite able to do what must be done. I just think you'd be interested in having as many people as possible working to clear it up. Naturally, I want to see my father's killers brought to justice. But I don't think father would appreciate the importation of investigators from Hartford. Rollin, please. I came here primarily to investigate the death of the first Hartford man. I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me until I satisfy myself that there's no connection between your father and that. What possible connection could there be? I don't know. There isn't any. If I hear of you dragging the Blackburn name into a sordid murder in that part of town... I will personally thrash you to within an inch of your life. Rollin, I must insist. I think perhaps that if you left, Mr. Dollar and I could conclude this meeting much more rapidly. Don't you have an appointment someplace? Don't you forget what I said, Dollar. I won't. Oh, I must apologize, Mr. Dollar. You don't have to. The loss of his father has been a great shock to him. And I must say, that other young man who was here as pleasant as he tried to be did leave us with the impression that he suspected us. One doesn't say things like that about the Blackburns. It is an extremely proud and moral family. I understand. I don't want you to think that I... Now, Mr. Dollar, what do you want me to do? Well, I think you've probably been asked these questions by Mr. Reimer, but if you'll bear with me... Of course. Ah... Were you here the night your husband died? Yes. I was in the other wing where our bedrooms are. Rollin was there, too. But he came down to the kitchen. That's through there. And found poor Leland. Neither of you heard anything? No. I had my radio on, I remember. But even so, it is quite a big house. It's a beautiful house. Miss Blackburn, do you have any idea who could have done this thing? Any enemies of your husband's? I knew of nobody who disliked Leland. He was a charitable, honest man. And a pious one. I'm sorry, Mrs. Blackburn. I won't bother you any longer. 
My only hope is that I may join him soon. Lieutenant Sim. This is Dalla, Lieutenant. Oh, yeah. What have you been up to? I've been out to see the Blackburns. How did you reconstruct the killing out there? Well, like I said, he still had the phone in his hand. He'd been hit a number of times with some blunt instrument. Anything to make you think there was more than one killer? No. The wounds were all on the right side of the head. Struck from behind by a right-handed man. Why? For the son. He was a little agitated at my being there. He said killers. What's that? He said he wanted to see his father's killers brought to justice. Plural. What would make him say a thing like that? I don't know. Well, as it stands, it's not worth anything as evidence, but I thought I'd tell you. To me, at that moment, it meant there was a possibility that Roland Blackburn knew more than he was saying. I spent another two hours trying to find something to strengthen that possibility, the financial condition of both the family and their brokerage firm. I got no place with it, but I returned to my hotel with the feeling that that one slip was going to develop into the link to connect Gene's death with the Blackburn investigation. The feeling lasted only a few seconds after I met the man who was waiting for me outside my room. Mr. Dollar, I'm Hal Brand. Oh, yeah? I'm the hotel detective here. Oh. I think I'd better talk to you. What about? The woman down in 413, Mrs. Reimer. How'd you find out about me? I've been keeping my eye on her. I saw you go to see her and checked on you. I had an idea that insurance company would send somebody else. Why have you been watching her? Her husband paid me to. I guess there was something wrong between them. Yeah. A man showed up to see her the day the husband was killed. I didn't get a chance to tell him, but I thought I ought to tell you. Who is he? Richard is his name. George. He's in the Clemens Hotel up the street. He checked in from Hartford, too. Come on the room, Brian. I want to hear the rest of it. Sure. There isn't much more. This Richard showed up at the Rhymer room about one in the afternoon. Rhymer was out, so I didn't get to him. And then he was shot that night about ten. Maybe it don't mean anything. You know where Richards is now? He checked out this afternoon, took the 540 plane to New York. Let me pour you a drink, Brian? Sure. You know a man's a fool to marry a woman as beautiful as that? It always means trouble. That's my personal opinion, anyway. My wife's as ugly as sin. But that's as far as it goes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Have you told this to the police, Brian? Not yet. Why not? Oh, I figure a couple of days won't make any difference. If the police don't come up with something else, but then I'll tell them. You've talked to her. What do you think? I don't know, but I'm going down to see her. Wouldn't be very smart, would it? Maybe not. That's the way I have to play it. Help yourself to another drink, Brian, and... And thanks. I've got to see you. Uh, sure, Johnny. Come in. What's the matter? Why'd you lie to me last night? I, I didn't. I, I don't understand. George Richards. Why didn't you tell me he was here? How did you find out? He was seen coming to this room. Why didn't you tell me? I was afraid to. Yeah, that I believe. I put myself out on a limb for you today because I thought there was a chance you wouldn't lie to me. I withheld information. They want a motive for Gene's murder, and I didn't mention you. I didn't kill him. That doesn't mean anything now that there's Richards. I didn't know he was here until I opened that door. He stayed here ten minutes, and I made him leave. I told him to go back home or there'd be real trouble. He didn't leave until this afternoon. I didn't know that. Johnny, I, I know I should have told you last night. I've always trusted you, but I knew how bad the situation would look, and I I just prayed that nobody would know George was here. You weren't covering up for him? No. I didn't know, Johnny. I, I didn't know he was still here. Quit it. Quit it, will you? Come on, sit down. Get a hold of yourself. Look, I want to believe you, Barbara. You know that. But it doesn't make any difference now whether I do or not. The police are going to learn about Richards. Are you going to tell them? I imagine they'll tell me. But I can't hold back anymore. 
And with the answers I'll have to give them, they can probably indict you for murder, or at least accessory with Richard. I didn't kill him. I, I don't know anything about stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I don't need hysterics. I need proof. How can you prove to me that you knew nothing about it? I don't know. Would Richards have done it alone? No. How can you prove that? It's a thing I know. I can't use things, you know. I need people and statements. People who will swear that they saw you at the time Gene Reimer was killed. People who will swear they saw Richard. It was nine o'clock. I was here. I can check that. That's all I know. Johnny, stop. Please stop. I can't stand anymore. Uh, all right, Angel. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to find an alibi for George Richards that night, but a stranger in a city the size of Charleston is hard to nail down. I went to the Clemens Hotel and questioned bellboys, clerks, maids, and bartenders, but those who remembered him hadn't seen him during the evening in question, and I tried cab drivers with no better success. It was after midnight when I went to bed and nine the next morning when I was awakened by a summons from the police accompanied by official transportation. Thanks, Sergeant. You can wait outside. Yes. Sit down, Dollar. Thanks. I had an interesting chat with the hotel detective where you were stopping. Oh, I'm not surprised, Lieutenant. What's the matter with you, son? You put yourself in a pretty darn serious position by holding back information from me. Why'd you do it? I'm not sure. You admitted knowing that Gene Reimer. Why didn't you tell me then that you... You knew about trouble between him and his wife. Well, I wanted to check the other angles first, the Blackburn investigation. How bad was this trouble? Pretty bad. Reimer had a mean streak that didn't show, except to his closest friends and intimates. You'd say uh, he did her bodily harm? Yep, lots of it. How'd you find out? From her. How well did you know her? I knew her before they were married. In love with her by any chance? If I had been, I would have married her. I know what you're driving at, Lieutenant. The possibility that that I came down here to protect her from a murder charge. Well, that's half true. What's that? She's been my friend. I didn't want to see her pulled in if she wasn't mixed up in it. You don't think she was? I'll have to leave that for you. I know she had a motive, and to make it better, a possible accomplice turns up. But so far, it's all circumstantial. And we put a searcher out on this man, Richards. That's how good them circumstances look to us. Sure. And I'll bet I can reconstruct your reconstruction. A phony tip to Rhyme on how to crack the Blackburn thing, an appointment on Magazine Street, and the payoff. Huh? You break that down? No, I tried. Barbara has an alibi, but Richards hasn't. Well, I've got to have somebody for that killing, Dollar. I'm going to bring her in. I'm surprised you haven't already. I want to talk to you first. I want you to stay here while I talk to her. Why? Why, you think she'll break down because of me? What's the matter with that board? I'll be right back. I've got to go get a man to pick her up. Contemplating suicide. Where's Lieutenant Seams? Just went out the other door. Be right back. Hey, you finally got the autopsy report on old man Blackburn. You sound as if you really didn't believe he was dead. Oh, no, he's dead all right. What is it, Sergeant? The Blackburn autopsy report. Yeah, look here. Hmm? Well, I'll be... Narcotics user. The press has been waiting for this, Lieutenant. And they've got a right to it. No, wait. Uh, don't give it to him yet. This has been pretty hard on that family. Hold on to it. No use dragging them through any more mud. At least till the federal men go to work on it. All right, sir. She'll be here in a few minutes, Dollar. So relax. I got to run through a few reports while we wait. It was hardly the time for relaxation, but I tried. We sat through an hour of questions to which there was no provable answers. And at the end of it, Barbara Reimer was booked on suspicion of murder and I was released on bail, charged with suspicion of being accessory after the fact. I had only one place to go. Good afternoon, Miss Blackburn. Good afternoon. I'm Mr. Dollar. You remember me? Of course I do. I wasn't expecting you. I'm sorry I didn't have time to phone. May I come in? Yes. Your son at home? No, he's at the office. What is it, Mr. Dollar? A girl has been arrested because the police think she killed Mr. Reimer, the other man from Hartford. Oh, 
I didn't know. I don't think she did it. I don't think I understand, Mr. Dollar. Why have you come here? Because I think you know she didn't do it, Mrs. Blackburn. Mr. Dollar. Could we sit down someplace? Yes. In the drawing room. Now, if you please, sir, what is the meaning of this? Why did you refuse to allow an autopsy to be performed on your husband? Because I believe it to be a revolting and savage practice. A mental torture that no one has the right to ask the survivors to experience. I will not condone it. Usually laws are stronger than human feelings. Do you know that one had been performed? I refused. Oh, Roland told me there was nothing to fear. He was wrong. I will not condone it. It's a matter of official record now, Mrs. Blackburn. The report says your husband was a narcotics user. He was not. He was. Your son knew it, and I think you did. I shall have to ask you to leave, Mr. Dollar. Please, Mrs. Blackburn, that wouldn't do any good. When I was here before, maybe you remember, your son said something he didn't intend to say. He told me that more than one man killed your husband. He said killers. He was upset. Both murders had something to do with the narcotics your husband used, didn't they? No. The police haven't been able to find a link between the Blackburn name and the magazine street section. The narcotics made that link, isn't that right? No. Gene Reimer must have found out. He was killed. Now a woman is charged with a murder she had nothing to do with. What else do you want? Oh, we thought we were doing the right thing. Why did you think that? We hoped to save Leland. That shame. And Rollin, his son, and his widow. Jean Rhyme, I must have learned from you. No. No one was to be told. Mr. Rhyme discovered it himself. When he faced us, we begged him to say nothing. But when he threatened us, we told him their names. The names of the people who supplied your husband? Yes. And made a hell of our lives. They've extorted money from us for almost ten years. We, of the inviolate family. They killed your husband. They came that night to force him to buy more. And when he refused and tried to telephone the police, they killed him. I want you to tell me who these people are. We told Mr. Rama. And, and he... I won't go alone. It will be finished then. This farce we live. It would be finished anyway. Oh, yes. To go no further. There are two. One is named Miller. The other, Stone. Why do I find him? You won't go alone. We've caused one death. I'll be all right. All right. I'll tell you where to find them. I hadn't planned to go alone, but on the way I began to wonder if the time I spent interesting the police wouldn't be used by Mrs. Blackburn to warn the two men whose capture would put the finish to the family reputation. So I didn't contact Lieutenant Sims. Instead, I stopped by my hotel to pick up an automatic and cab to the Magazine Street address by myself. Take it easy up there if I was you. Thanks, I will. Here you are. Thanks, sir. Who are you? Miller. What's the idea of pushing in? I just came from the Blackburn place. Where? The old lady is tired of trying to save the family pride. She talked again. What? What other reason would I have for being here? She's ready to talk to the police about her husband. I'm ready to talk to you about Gene Reimer. I don't get it. You'd better start. Come on. Where? Out the door. We'll find our way. Now, listen to me. You can't pull a man around like this without saying why I haven't done nothing. Then why argue? All right, I'll go. Miller, Miller! Get away from me. Find Stone, I... I gotta talk to Stone.
He did get a chance to talk to Stone, but not before Lieutenant Sims heard him out and added his statement and out of the surviving Blackburns, which cleared Barbara Reimer and yours truly. Expense account item three, $110, miscellaneous expenses in Charleston. Item four, same as item two, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total. Oh, excuse me. Yep. Hello, Johnny. Oh. Hi, Barbara. I, I thought you were coming over. It's after four. Uh, well, as a, as a matter of fact, I was just going to phone. I, I can't make it. What's the matter, Johnny? I've got another case. What's the matter, Johnny? I, I have to earn a living. All right. You know where to find me if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try to call you when I get back to town. Okay? Goodbye. Uh, expense account total, $345.75. Remarks? This was a fairly personal assignment, and it brings to mind a fairly personal observation. Cops, private or otherwise, should never marry. They're lousy husbands because they're away from home so much. But more important, they leave too many widows. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien's latest picture is the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were John Daner, Jim Nusser, Jeanette Nolan, Georgia Ellis, John McIntyre, and Larry Dobkin. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. You can sing it again on CBS tonight for a whole hour of fun-packed, music-packed entertainment. And maybe Dan Seymour will be calling you to solve one of the tuneful little riddle songs that lead to a chance at radio's largest cash jackpot, $5,000, plus $10,000 more in wonderful prices. Alan Dale, Judy Lynn, Bob Howard, the Riddlers, and Ray Block's Orchestra are on hand to sing and play the riddle tunes leading up to Dan Seymour's Coast to Coast Calls. Be listening again later tonight when Sing It Again comes along on most of these same CBS stations. Now stay tuned for Von Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where you laugh with Lucille Ball and my favorite husband on Saturday nights, the Columbia Broadcasting System.